back to the course on blockchain. Uh, so hopefully by this time uh, you got a good grasp of uh, the theoretical concept behind blockchain uh, along with both the permissionless and the permission model of blockchain. And uh, hopefully you got a good demo of uh, how to implement uh, blockchain protocol and write your own public ledger and uh, smart contracts uh, using this hyperledger platform or better to say the hyperledger fab fabric platform that uh, Praveen has taught to you. Uh, uh, so I, I guess that uh, by this time you have uh, written certain small programs on uh, blockchain and uh, you have written certain smart contracts and you have a good idea about the power of blockchain and smart contract in the context of business platform. Also uh, during the last lecture Praveen has given you a broad overview of different industry use cases for blockchain and uh, you have looked into that uh, supply chain management and uh, various other financial or non-financial uh, usage of blockchain technology from the perspective of an industry. So in this talk, uh, we look into the blockchain from the government perspective that how this uh, blockchain technology can give you uh, ubiquitous or a uniform computation platform to execute uh, different government applications and can develop a smart environment or smart governance system by incorporating different uh, computing technologies together uh, including blockchain, uh, artificial intelligence, data driven analytics and many others. Uh, so we will uh, keep this discussion uh, mostly non-technical and uh, we will look into several use cases along with uh, different kind of examples from different countries that uh, how you can apply the blockchain technology to make the life of a people better. Uh, so it will give you uh, aspects of using blockchain for public good on uh, different computation platforms. Uh, so let us look into a little details about uh, where government can utilize this uh, blockchain platform. So uh, broadly if you look into this concept of blockchain, uh, this entire domain of blockchain is particularly interesting or particularly useful uh, when you have multiple organization or multiple institution under different authoritative domains and they want to share certain data among themselves or certain information among themselves which need to be validated, need to be audited or you want certain level of security uh, on top of that shared data. Uh, as an example, uh, just think of like uh, you want to send an email uh, over a network whenever you are sending an email over a network, uh, you do not actually bother whether uh, the person is in USA or uh, the person is in Canada or the person in some eastern countries like say Singapore. Uh, what you really bother is the address of that person, the email ID of that person and you directly send that uh, ID over the network. Uh, now in this environment, the whole architecture is useful because uh, you have a control or a central control like uh, the email platforms uh, which can uh, talk with each other and their communication is not dependent on the border of a specific country. Now on the other hand, uh, just think about a scenario of a postal email. So think of a use case where you want to send a postal email from say India from some small village of India to some place in say Canada. Now if you want to do this kind of postal transfer, uh, the entire thing is handled by at least two different government, the Indian government, the Indian post and the Canadian post, the Canadian government. So whenever you have this multiple organizations and multiple organizations are handling some kind of assets all together, during that time the problem comes like you need to trust the other party for the information. So 
if your uh, parcel or if your post get lost from Canada and you are at India, uh, you cannot directly blame the Canadian post or you do not have any way to verify that uh, why or at what location that post got stolen or the post got altered or something has happened with your post. So, the only thing down which you have to rely is on the information that is provided to you or better to say that is provided to the Indian post by the Canadian post. So, that way there need to be certain levels of trust relationships among multiple governments, multiple uh, individual authoritative domains and collectively they build up this entire system. So, this postal delivery works good in a practical environment because uh, this individual postal agencies they completely trust each other. Uh, there is certain level of trust that if I am delivering a post from Indian post to the Canadian post, the other end will be responsible enough to deliver the post to the final destination. Another problem which comes in this entire picture is the difference of rules between these two government or the, these two agencies. So, Indian post they have their own set of rules or regulations. On the other hand, the Canadian post they have their own set of rules and regulations. Now, if you want to bring them to a common platform, it becomes very difficult. Say, uh, as such, if certain post get lost whenever you are sending them among multiple organization, you cannot blame one person or proving something on that particular environment is really difficult uh, because uh, you do not have access to the global data. So, from that particular view or from that particular perspective, uh, this kind of blockchain technology is interesting because it can take the idea uh, beyond this individual borders of the countries or better to say individual border of the organization or the different authoritative domains. Now, if you look into the government perspective, the government needs to maintain multiple assets in together. So, those assets can be in the digital form or can be in a printed form or can be in a paper form. So, uh, here I have tried to list it down a few. Uh, so, the government needs to maintain the daily operations and activities of the government. Uh, so, daily operations and activities of the government then different uh, government assets like uh, land records, the building records, uh, different aspects of the building, the municipality need to keep the information about the building, their uh, age, uh, how old individual buildings are, what, are the, what is the current condition, the civil condition of a building, uh, all these details need to be maintained. Send the details of the people, details of the government, uh, say different government workers different organization or the institutes, the records of the people, different business transactions. So, the government need to deal with multiple uh, business uh, partners uh, and in different aspects. So, different um, industries who are uh, there for say the supply chain management, the defense industry. So, that way uh, the government on day to day basis, they have to uh, keep a relationship with multiple such agencies and they need to perform this kind of transaction. Now, the question comes that uh, how will you keep the record for those transactions? So, if you keep the record for those transactions in a paper format, it is always vulnerable. If you keep it in a digital format, then who is going to host that particular information? Say today, if the Indian government is having a business partnership or a business relationship with Walmart, uh, which is a private agency, then uh, this transaction information who will be maintaining. So, one way is the government is maintaining his own part of the transaction and uh, Walmart will maintain their own part of the transaction. And then uh, if certain dispute comes, then that dispute need to get resolved by the auditors, by the lawmakers in the that will go to the court and you know that it takes years of time to get it resolved because 
proving something or proving that something bad has happened or something wrong has happened, that is very difficult under this kind of multi organizational scenario when the information is distributed among multiple parties. Now, if you want to keep all the information to a central database, which uh, on which the government can insert their transaction as well as Walmart can also insert their transaction. So, the, with this architecture, the first problem is the cost, like you need to pay a huge amount of money to that third party. The second problem is like you need to rely on the services provided by that third party. So, it is just like that the cloud hosting platform, if tomorrow it crashes, then all the transactions are nowhere. So, you will not be able to recover all these transactions or you will not be have any way to validate uh, the recover the validate the uh, correctness of the recover transactions. So, those are the specific problems that uh, a large institution like a country government need to face on their day to day basis. So, blockchain can provide a ubiquitous or overall platform over this architecture to build or to make a kind of relationship among multiple such organizations altogether. So, let us see some use cases that how it can be done. Well, now whenever you look into this governance platform, so you have different level of govern governance architecture. So, that is why we call it as a multi institutional or multi organization. So, you have different village panchayats, then you have the district government, then you have the state government on a large scale and on a country level scale you have the central government. And all these governments, so the state government has certain relationship with the uh, central government, the district magistrate has certain relationship with the state government. So, the funds are being transferred from the central government to the state government from the district level government to the individual gram panchayats or uh, individual uh, individual city uh, centers. So, uh, on, on uh, the, the, the corporation level all those individual uh, government organization and you need to track that how these individual assets are moving from one hand to another and then uh, you also need to track that how individual money that is given to different level of government they are being spent. Now, whenever you are writing it on pen and paper as I you understand that it is always vulnerable, uh, it, it depends on the individual. So, the if the individual worker gets compromised which can be uh, highly possible in an open environment, uh, if individuals are getting compromised then the entire system may fall down. So, uh, we want to build up a relationship, we want to develop an technical system which will help you to prevent this kind of malfunction or cheating or frauding uh, inside the system. So, uh, every level of government they build their own ledger of data and uh, that data has different access management policies it has role based access control or the access management, certain people are uh, valid for accessing certain part of the data and not other part of the data. So, this way somehow we try to manage this entire data altogether. But as you know or as you can read from the daily newspaper that uh, with this uh, kind of architecture, the frauds or the scams are very common and uh, whenever they are there, it is very difficult to prove that someone has done certain frauds and uh, it is also difficult to detect that who has done the fraud. So, in this particular architecture blockchain can play a good role and uh, also uh, in this architecture we have different priority of data. So, you have high priority data which need to be highly secured, uh, it need to have restricted access, you need to prevent it from unauthorized access. One example is Tadha data uh, in Indian context on which we have a lot of debate nowadays whether your other data is uh, all, uh, secure or not. Uh, so, Indian government is already looking into the aspect of securing the other data with the help of blockchain. So, 
we are exploring these different possibilities that can be there uh, for securing the data. But this entire blockchain environment that can give you a nice architecture where uh, it is it is like that uh, the entire system is tamper proof. So whenever you write something on the blockchain, you cannot revert it back or you cannot claim that I have not written it. Okay, so, so that is the entire platform or disruptive technology that uh, blockchain provides which can be utilized for multiple government applications. So individual blocks in a blockchain, they may contain huge amount of data, such kind of data. So this data, it cannot be altered without colluding majority of the blocks. And the data access, uh, you can also keep the data access as a part of your blockchain, where individual data access is like a transaction. Say, if company A has access the other data of person B, then you can represent this entire thing as the form of a transaction and you can put it in the blockchain. Now, if you make an architecture like every other data access need to go via a blockchain. So, if you want to get access to the data, other data, you have to first include a record to the transaction. If that record gets committed or that record get validated, that transaction record get validated uh, by the blockchain consensus protocol, then only you will be allowed to uh, further access the data once, once that particular transaction gets committed. That way with this particular architecture, you can ensure that whenever someone is going to access the other data, there are multiple parties in the consensus protocol who will validate that whether this person is actually authenticated to access the other data or not. And also once that person access the other data, person or institute that access the other data, then uh, that person or institute will never be able to deny later on that it has not accessed the data because the data or the access transaction has been logged into the blockchain which is irrevertible. You cannot change it later on or later on you cannot make a demand that I have not accessed it. So uh, well uh, we can use this uh, blockchain for the government platform because government database it is always a major target for the hackers. Uh, so there was uh, a report from cyber strategy doctrine by US Department of Defense uh, who have reported that in 2015, so this report was published in 2015, in 2015 around 77,183 cyber security incidents that were happened on top of the different federal agencies under US government. And Richard Clark, he made a nice term called cyberware and the idea of this cyberware is like that uh, one nation, it is trying to penetrate the database of uh, another nation and trying to steal the data for that nation for controlling different activities of this nation. So recently you have uh, this different kind of data scam like when uh, this Facebook data, it got uh, public uh, or Facebook got uh, actually shared the data with some third agency which actually used that agency to provoke the election of different countries. So this kind of uh, news which are coming regularly on the news media, uh, it is yet to validate the correctness of those news, but uh, it is very difficult, the inherent message is that it is very difficult to prove the validity of this kind of news or to say something against that news that this has not been happened. Because there is no such log which actually tells you that whether that happened or not and to analyze that log you need to have a, a huge number of cyber security experts who need to look into different transactions or different data transfer that have been over, happened over the internet and from there they have need to find out that the data that have been shared to Cambridge Analytica by Facebook or, or what type of utilization or how that data is actually being used. But all this problem can be prevented if the data is there in the blockchain or if the data is accessed via the blockchain because you are actually making a public ledger or a public log of all the transactions which are being happened on this technology. 
Well, so I have just taken some newspaper articles uh, which talks about different kind of privacy bits. So, this Facebook privacy bits that was the recent attack uh, which was there and uh, then this, uh, uh, this uh, debate on the other data security which is currently a hot topic. So, uh, we cannot say something in the fall of uh, this particular data breach or against this data breach. It is yet to prove, but uh, this kind of debate is there uh, and proving that is difficult. And if you look into the Wikipedia page of list of data breaches, you will find out that uh, a large number of uh, data breach that has happened over the past few years uh, that has been listed in Wikipedia and that would be a nice exercise for you to look into what happened over the years there. Well, uh, the message that I want to convey here that um, here the major problem is the data it is shared among multiple organization at different levels of government structure. When the data is shared among multiple organizations at different level of the government structure, uh, the data breaches, the possibility of data breaches, it increases at every level. You can have data duplication. Say for example, uh, whenever you are submitting your copy of the Aadhaar card or your Aadhaar number to some uh, bank or to some mobile company, you are actually making a duplication of the data. Now, this data duplication gets increased and the data multiplicity get increased which actually increases the possibility of data breach. So, if the entire data is on a central storage and then if you can make a architecture where everyone it will be accessing that data via some common platform uh, which is available to everyone through which everyone can validate whether those access are correct or not, uh, then possibly this kind of problems can be mitigated. So, that is why blockchain is coming to be a disruptive technology to support uh, these different types of applications which are suitable for the government purpose. Let us see an use case of your passport data. So, your passport data is ideally at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, who, are, um, who are responsible for passport data management. Now, there are different other organization in the picture who actually use your passport data. So, the income tax department, the national intelligence, the national audit agency, they can periodically check your passport data to find out that which countries you have visited and how much time you are there in those countries to look into uh, the amount of money or the amount of assets that you possess and its relationship with your uh, foreign visits. So, the national income tax department can look into your passport data to find it out. Then your airport or the custom check, they look into your passport data to review the airport exit or entry. Then the national army or the defense agency, they can look into the passport data to find out whether there is certain kind of uh, national theft. The police agency in Indian context, the CBI or CID, the crime department, they can look into the passport data for investigating certain cases. Then you have this public service identity database like uh, say whenever uh, you are going for uh, opening a bank account, then you need to give a proof of your identity. There you can submit a copy of your passport page. So, the data is also a copy of their data is also with them. So, that way this entire passport data it is being managed or it is being accessed by multiple government departments. Now, if something bad happens with your passport data then who is responsible for that? Actually, you do not know or it becomes very difficult to prove someone that what has actually happened to that data. And here, uh, blockchain come into pictures. So, this is, this is a kind of broad uh, government information sharing system which can be decentralized with the help of a blockchain technology. So, I have just tried to give a schematic view which I have borrowed from uh, one paper, the reference is given at the bottom. Uh, so, this architecture says that you have certain service requester and uh, uh, other service requester who actually request the service from uh, your data collector 
through some service broker, intermediate service broker uh, who actually help you to get access to the data. Say for example, for the other data, the responsible service broker, you can think of UIDAI is the responsible service broker who is helping to validate the individual other data. And then in their database, you have uh, multiple different type of data and the services, yeah, agent directory service, the data directory service, the search account or other different type of services and some portal through which you access the entire data. Now, if this access to the data gets decentralized and if it is performed on the top of a blockchain, then it becomes easier to find out that who has actually accessed this particular data. So, that we can look into more details and we can make a provenance tra tracking of how my data is being accessed by multiple parties. So, uh, how blockchain helps here? Uh, so, one aspect is the access and verification of central data. So, your data is in a central database and access to the database you represent it in the form of a transaction. Every such transaction that is locked into a blockchain, the concept that uh, I have explained earlier, like all the data access you first uh, log it on a blockchain. So, uh, you first say that I am going to access this data for this purpose which is uh, written as a transaction. Then different nodes in the network, they will validate that whether you are authenticated enough or you are responsible or uh, whether uh, you can have access to that particular data or service. And if they agree, then you put that information to the log and access the data. And that way the verification is done uh, through the consensus algorithm and the log is being maintained that the blockchain which you cannot alter later on. So, you will not be able to claim later on that uh, I have not made this particular transaction because everyone in the network through the consensus protocol, they have already validated that you are the authenticated person who is initiating the transaction and uh, you have uh, put that transaction in the transaction log which anyone can see. So, uh, anyone can uh, verify who has access the data and for what purpose. The second form where blockchain can help is the sharing of data. Now, instead of putting the access in the form of transaction in the blockchain, you put the data in the blockchain itself. So, in that case, uh, you can always see that which particular data has been shared uh, with others and once you share certain data, that data cannot be altered. So, this kind of model is uh, very useful for uh, your uh, uh, say uh, your, your supply chain management system where the data is basically the demand and supply at different locations and that can be put inside a blockchain. The third model is sharing of data as well as the access control. So, you combine the other two approaches together. So, you keep both the data and the access at a blockchain. So, anyone can verify the data as well as who has accessed that data. Now, neither data nor the access that can be altered later on and the access cannot be denied. So, you get a tamper proof technology to maintain your data as well as make access control on top of that architecture. Few use cases. Uh, so, where government is actually involving in uh, blockchain based application. So, in Russia, the state run bank. Uh, our bank, they partnered with uh, Russia's Federal uh, Anti-Monopoly Service FS to implement document transfer and storage uh, via blockchain. So, this was a news that uh, published uh, December 2017. Then in South Korea, Daily Financial Group which is a house of Korean fintech startups, they are working on creating different blockchain based ecosystem, they called it as ICON. Uh, which will allow gov different government departments, universities, hospitals, banks, etc. to interact with uh, uh, without any third party network. So, you can have a blockchain environment on which they can share their data and provide service to the people. Uh, then in Singapore, Singapore government was, uh, uh, was uh, pioneer in, uh, in developing blockchain based application. So, they have started a project called uh, Ubin. Uh, so, in this Ubin project, they have started to explore the use of 
this distributed ledger technology for clearing and settlement of payment and security. So, like the, for domestic interbank payments, uh, they are looking into the feasibility of distributed ledger technology uh, for using this UBIN. It is like that you uh, want to issue and transfer funds among participants, provide loan to certain participants. So, for that uh, all this access information they will be put in a blockchain that can be later uh, verified by the auditors easily. In India, uh, there was a recent uh, development. So, uh, this uh, particular news was very, uh, very uh, new. So, the news was in uh, February 22nd, 2018 when it got published. Uh, so, in India, the government is trying to develop something called the India chain, uh, which is a trial solution for utilizing the blockchain technology for digitization and verification of educational degree certificates. Uh, so, it is like that uh, there are a lot of fraud on uh, educational degree certificates. So, uh, the degree certificates would be put on a blockchain platform and uh, that can be easily verified by uh, different, uh, different uh, department who wants to verify them or there will also be have certain kind of access logs to find out that who actually accessed those educational certificates for a particular person. And authorization can also be guaranteed on top of this architecture. So, they have, uh, India has taken this initiative. And uh, the last on USA, so in USA, uh, blockchain was a big uh, impact. So, the government has started to look into the blockchain technology from different aspects. Uh, one aspect is this uh, general service administration or GSA, which is an agency of the United States government. It manages the basic functioning of federal agencies. They are interested to evaluate the distributed ledger technologies. So, they have made a call for proposal for getting multiple suggestion about how the blockchain technology can be applied for the financial management, procurement, IC asset and supply chain management, uh, patents or the copyright management, then the federal personal workforce data management in this different aspects of uh, blockchain technology. So, uh, this gives you a overall view about uh, how government can utilize this uh, blockchain platform uh, to secure the data as well as to ensure the access and auditing of information uh, at the government level. Uh, in the next lecture, we will look into certain use cases of this and uh, we will also look into one practical example where the government was successfully able to develop a, a electronic platform to facilitate multiple services uh, through this uh, blockchain concept. Uh, so, we will discuss uh, these details in the next class. Thank you for attending the class for today.